Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy, Dead Gremlin. I'm back. Uh, missed you guys. Uh, so happy to see all your smiling faces. I hope you're smiling. Today, I thought it would be fun to go back into the wild, crazy world of the 90s. I bought a bunch of 90s image comics online, mostly ones I've never heard of. So like I, I read Spawn and Youngblood and stuff like that. I was born in 95, so I missed the, the boom. I wanted to find a bunch of ones I've never heard of. Pretty excited. I hope you guys like uh, rippling muscles, pouches, uh, ponytails, and I hope you guys hate feet because feet were not drawn in the 90s. Feet didn't exist in the 90s. You cover that shit with smoke. That's what experts do. Come on over to my viewing station and uh, let's go through these books. I'm pretty excited. This way, come on. All right, y'all, starting off, we've got Stormwatch number one. The 90s, man, what a great time for uh, taking two words and and putting them together to make something brand new. I'm gonna make some off the top of my head, watch this. Deathbringer, Crypt Slasher, that's Crypt Slasher. We're jumping in, this is uh, got some Jim Lee. Jim Lee's the co-creator of this. I have found that the Jim Lee books, for the most part, are drawn anatomically well, uh, as opposed to some of the, we'll get to some crazy ones later. But you know, it's pretty good, look at this guy. He's got a, a dome helmet, you know, that's pretty cool. I don't know the tactical advantage, maybe he can get like readouts around his head, but it really, I don't know why it's a dome, but I mean, if he got shot, his eyes would be filled with glass. But the thing about the 90s that I love is it felt very, like you would if you were in middle school, the comics you would want to make. Like, every chick is crazy hot, every dude is ripply and muscly. I mean, look at how glorious this man is. I, this guy can't even take it. Look, look at that guy. I like this guy. What's interesting about the 90s I have found from, like, character designs is a lot of them just don't really stand the test of time like Grifter does. And you know why? Because Grifter is iconic, simple, trench coat, cool mask. That's all you need. Guys like whoever the fuck this guy is. Let's see who he is. Battalion. That guy's name is Battalion. This is pretty fucking awesome. Like the team shots in the 90s were so cool. All their names would pop up. I love all that kind of stuff. Every book at this time wanted to be the X-Men though, it feels like. Every book wanted that like the teammates jump in they talk to each other there's some behind the scenes bickering like i think later there's like a in Stormwatch, there's a love triangle i mean look at that girl that's the ideal woman look at the ideal man sweaty so it's some like internal team politics like they always wanted to throw that in because that was very x-men the melodrama every 90s book i have found opens with the characters being like i used to be on this team and now i'm on, on this team look at this guy I'll tell you what, I read all of these and I was gonna like go through and tell you what the story was, but I don't remember. Uh, a lot of these kind of blend in together when you read 30 image uh, books from the 90s. The bombasticness. People just wanted to blow things out of the panels. It feels like the Jack Kirby of this time. Like when Jack Kirby came out, people were excited because it was over the top. Things were coming out of the panels. Things were coming at you. People were like, this is what comics can be. And then the 90s doubled down on that. Just huge men with rippling muscles and this guy being penetrated. You know, you never like being penetrated. Uh, by pink laser beams. Uh, Stormwatch, not bad. I mean, I started with a pretty good one. Most of the time in the 90s, it was like, how much shit can we put on a guy? And how many grenades can he be carrying? And that's cool in a way, but it something about something being I iconic just sticks in your mind a little bit more than just, when I was drawing, I wanted to like prove how many things I could put on a character. And now I have found that I kind of like character design, like core concepts, like a good silhouette, color scheme, like a striking, like you look at it and you go, I get this character. Now we've got death blow, another combination of, of words. Anything with blow in it, I'm down. Death is cool in the 90s. Death is rad. I'm pro, uh, they're pro death. Bazooka firing off, huge explosion. I love two page spreads. 90s two page spreads, they know it. They want these big panels of close ups of faces. Oh man. That was the good old days. Oh, and it's empty, that sucks. Trading cards, just goodies, man. Like I love stuff like that. I wish, I know it was so like gimmicky back in the day, but holographic covers now are so nostalgic. I was born in 95, so my first like huge into comics was like Ultimate Spider-Man, which is very of this era actually, when you go back and look at the very first issues. I love in the 90s, these thin panels. There were so many huge thin panels. You look at Deathblow confessing his sins or something, I don't, I'm not sure. A guy like that, he has caused some mayhem. The pe every wrinkle is of someone he's killed. The difference between me and them is that I'm me <laughs> and they're them. Shit. That's cool, I love like 
simulating motion with the panels. That's awesome. Death blow. Blood pool. Damn, look at that 90s, man. Just a word and a word. Death train. And it would be like a guy with two locomotives as bicep, and he would punch you and it, then he would drown you in coal. I don't know. That was dumb, but it, they probably make it in the 90s. Blood pool. Right off the bat, instantly, I like this cover. This guy, honestly, is a little bit my, more iconic for some reason because he has a solid color and he has a, a silhouette and he's got these katanas on his back. These ladies, uh, I don't... The, especially they're wearing the basically the same outfit with different colors i don't know they look like fighting game characters i just don't think they would hold up and, and this guy wolverine wannabe it totally blows discharged oh man don't you hate when you discharge and you don't really you weren't really planning on it now right away overwhelming i open this and i'm like my eyeballs okay 95 so it's been a few years this does look a little better than the early ones 1991 like right right at the beginning of computer coloring people were going nuts so and they were like i have a computer i thought it's limitless and it kind of is too much and then people reined it back so some of these 95 to 99 looks a little better like this looks good but right here all those little rocks it's a little too much. So this whole issue, I've read this one, is him being pissed because they're like in trouble and they can't do what they want to do. And the whole issue is them being pissed at Shaft, which a great name. I mean, people who grew up in the 90s are probably yelling at me like, Shaft, I love him, he's so cool. But a dirty boy like me immediately, you say, this character's name is Shaft. And I'm like, oh, okay, his sidekick chub you know but uh this is beside the point some boob shots some gratuitous this rats of pervo pervin on the boob now this is a nitpick but this tangent is strange so this lady goes right into the next panel so it, it tricks your eyes and makes it think that she has a tiny head in these giant bazongas if you're into that it's fine she can have giant bazongas but i don't think that was what was intended it's like half of me thinks this is bad half of me thinks this is good that's what the whole thing of the 90s is half of me loves the authenticity and the just going for it and going nuts and drawing tons of stuff and very anime like just get out all of this pent up like i want to draw dudes with a million goggles and ripped guys and chicks with big boobs and all this stuff like half of me is like i get that half of me is also like oh, reel it back if i don't right away notice it i don't like look for bad things but if i right away i'm like ooh, that arm just a little weird like his fist scrunched scrunched up tiny little arm but that's fine you know we're it's in the 90s no one care people are drinking capri suns all day getting high uh not on you know weed so much but like gushers and stuff it's mostly people talking and standing around but with crazy bombastic panels now look at this i love this tire that's a satisfying t drawing of a tire that makes me feel okay about tires because here's the thing tires are really hard for some reason like i can draw a, a car no, like no problem. Tires, I dread. I don't want to draw a tire. Whoa, that's a lady. Whoa. Okay, that's a woman, right? That's your first th thought is, whoa, that's a woman. But then you go, okay, if she was actually that big and think about yourself and your own head, like let's say she's six foot. My head would be about this big, my shoulders this big, and whoa, no, no, my legs, knee would be, he my knee would be here might be here okay she's huge and if she was actually proportionate she'd be tiny a tiny little stick lady now see again i, uh, I like that i i think there's a shot where he's got his backpack and he's got like a cool cyber backpack that his katanas go through and i'm like that's pretty radical i, I will give you that Oof. just if you can hear if you want to make the sound, and then we go to this, and I'm like, what? Ow! And then she's twisted. Ouch! And then we got knockoff Wolverine character that I love. Want to see your own intestines? Oog. Uh, yeah, there it is. I love that backpack, actually. That design is cool. And you can't say that they didn't, people didn't give their all with these pages. Some Marvel books nowadays, like, some of the backgrounds are lacking. Like, these guys gave it their all and went full, full tilt. Blood pool. It took me a solid minute to understand what that said. But when I started it, I was like, Sip, soup. All I know is, wow. What a lame design. Honestly, what a lame design. I'm green, and that's fine. Very nice helicopters. Again, I love these long pa panels. I'm going to try to include them. I don't know what why that makes it so 90s. Ooh. When I drop my fat stack of cash on the ground, you know, as I do, I have so many bursting out of my pockets. I lean over and that's what I look like. I clench, what are you gonna do? 
Um, okay, a lot of backstory, a lot of lore going on anyway. All right, here we go. Yeah. Wowzer, bro. Holy shit. Whoa! Her butt is thinking. Yo! Whoa! That's pretty, that's pretty awesome. There are things that just take me out of it. Like, this lady is so plain. Whoa! What is this one called? Oh, yeah, Crypt. D. Now I'm just making sounds. And I love the explosive panels in the 90s, I really do. I'm gonna start using that a lot. Feels instantly, you don't know why it's subconscious, but instantly it's like, he's really mad. Now I'm going through like ones I've never heard of, like Crypt, Blood Pool, but I would love to go through like Savage Dragon, Spawn, uh, Young Blood, The New Man. Everything in this era was about being like the X-Men, you know? The X-Men were popping. Whoa, we got Backlash. Back scratch, uh, back draft, back, back in business. Wait a second. Oh, I was confused. They tricked me. I think it's Ron Mars, but it's Wildstorm, which is a Jim Lee production. So typically Jim Lee productions pretty solid uh, artistically. We open with a classic jet ski scene as is when if you're going to open a comic, open it with a jet ski scene, I say. And that's a cool design. The water looks good. That's awesome. Let's read it a little bit. Okay, I'm not, so this is issue eight, which is also a thing I love going in the 90s and just jumping into the middle of it because I actually think things out of context are way funnier. Like, Diane's broken up with him, so he's going to this water headquarters. A whole army of demonites. I must be nuts. Whoa, lots of stuff happening here. This looks just like that chick from Stormwatch. Maybe it is her, but I have no idea. So they, we've got these guys are talking about the demonites are coming. They've got to stop them. Whoa, I, this must be the backlash. I don't know anything about this book, so I like this blue glowing man. That looks like Death Blow, Grifter. Some good old boys and girls. That's all right, he's got a big old helmet. I like that. Guys, I got another car. And it's in here, let's see. Oh, shit, I'm like a little boy again. Who, who are you? Backlash, it's him. Now the art on that is not even like dumb and fun, but whatever. That's painted very nice. I love that. That's cool. Got his backstory. Let's read it. In the Pacific, Backlash links aboard the newly operational behemoth. He spots Hellspont, brandishing the demon eye keys and seizes them with his sound. I am going to frame that above my bed and I'm going to pray to it every night. Whoa! That guy's pretty sick. This just like busting out of the panels, taking up like whole page spreads just for like a really, really rendered character. I love, like we do need to implement this in modern comics, like storytelling. And uh, I think the art nowadays is just generally like you got a lot of different types of artists now bringing their skills and just a more diverse kind of, but I, I still want the bombastic, over the top, radically drawn, just like giving it your all spirit. Spirit of the 90s. Uh, we got another team shot, they're all chilling. Her design's cool, I like, I'm a sucker for like sweet goggles. And then this is that guy again. This is, these must be from Stormwatch. And then Mr. Checkerboard Man, uh, Domino lookalike. No, this one's pretty cool. Oh, another card, I'm gonna look at that later. And then Grifter, you gotta have Grifter. Oh, now this is a guy I kind of know because he's in Youngblood, I, I think he's in Youngblood or Brigade or one of those other ones. Chapel, dude. Now, oh, we gotta look, I got issue one down here. Yes, Chapel, dude. Oh, they're like, we can't even fathom how bodacious your thighs are. I like this. I think the green and the color scheme and all the bullets in his weird hand, that's a, also a bunch of finger guns. I genuinely actually think this is pretty cool. What? Oh my God, your little Jake in the 90s would have been like, oh, I'm pissing, I'm pissing. Okay, now I've read the name Stinson. Bruce Stinson, that's a great name. To my friends and lovers, to my enemies and victims, I'm Chapel. <laughs> Would you be scared of a guy named Chapel? I guess if he had fingers, guns for fingers. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. How every 90s book is like, I used to be on this team. And this is Extreme Studios, I believe. So it's Rob Liefeld's stuff. And Eric Stevenson is fucking writing this, dude. I started off with a strictly undercover wet works operation called Night Strike, and then wound up a charter member of the government spandex super team, Youngblood. So it's always like, I used to be on this team, and that team sucked. I love he has a framed photo of Spawn, I guess. <laughs> the old crew. Badass. Now, I looked through this one earlier. It's basically just 
uh, chapels on his old crew and they've got like an upper, they gotta defeat some guy. But look at him crush that dude's head and it pulverizes into spaghetti. Speed lines are little skulls, man, whoa. Wouldn't you love in real life to have an after image of yourself, but it's skulls? The new men. <laughs> Without the font, just imagine that typed out normal with a period, new men. Would you wanna read that? Man, the rendering on the guns in, the, in this time was so cool. I would like this style in like a horror book. It's actually pretty cool. Now, if you wanna talk about veins, and I'm always down to talk about veins, I might make the argument that there's too many on this character, especially like go back to the first page. Like his arm right there, he looks, it looks kind of like Swiss cheese. This guy needs to drink water, he needs electrolytes. But uh, look at all that. So. It hits me. It, it does hit me. Like, if you can disguise bad anatomy with, like, a million grenades. Like, if you're like, I don't know how to draw feet. Just have feet all over it. <laughs> have grenades all over his feet. Even though it makes no sense. But you're like, whoa, he could kick grenades at people. Crack tomb. As explosions go, this one's a beauty. And for just the slightest instant, it's so hot and dry. I can't even feel the rain. That's... Some of the dialogue is solid. So it, Eric Stevenson is a good writer. I think Chapel has some of the good, like, Frank Miller-esque internal monologue going. Ooh. What? You've never seen a snake that big before. <laughs> You're telling me, Chapel. You're telling me. That one's pretty solid, um, honestly. And then I started reading the second issue and it completely switches to the other artist, which I never am a fan of. I remember when Ultimate Spider-Man switched to Stuart Eminem and I love that guy now. In retrospect, I go back and those issues are great, but I was so into Mark Bagley that I was like, fuck this guy. This isn't my Ultimate Spider-Man. Kill Razor, yes, got it. Deathbringer, Squad Sniper, Snipe Driller, Driller, Captain, Captain Drillerhead. Might be the most boring character design I've ever seen. Didn't want to draw the feet so much that gave him boots made of the mountain? This guy chilling down there like, oh man, those boots are so cool, so practical. Dude, what if your spider sense was you get all veiny everywhere and you're like, there's danger. That's cool. See, again, I like these guys from the cover. Uh, again, this one's drawn pretty good. I like this one. I like this one all right. That face is kind of weird, but every plot is Oh shit, we gotta fight these guys. We get a bunch of seeds of the team being like, hey, you, what's the dealio? Death blow and say their name. And then they go, huh, you're crazy. And that's most of the book. I like that pose. I like him jumping out of the panels. I like the way that this looks and is colored. Just his design is so boring. I'll fix him right now. Give him one of those SWAT team grenade belt things that goes around his back, uh, a belt and like uh, spikes. Uh, there you go, fixed him. If you guys haven't seen it, go find the video of Rob Liefeld and Todd McFarlane drawing with Stan Lee. It's fantastic. They're just like, yo, you put a chain on him, and Stan Lee's kind of making fun of him, and it's, it's so funny. That is a great two-page spread of a double kick. That's cool. I like that. This one's pretty, this one's pretty radical. I wasn't sucked in when I opened it, but this one's bringing me in a little bit. That pose is cool, too. They look like tiny, tiny men, because the perspective is such that that looks like he's right next to him. So he's a tiny man shooting a little gun into his leg. Cool shot. Whoa, see every page you flip it, you are blown away, your hair stands up. You chug your Capri Sun and you keep going. So yeah, all right. Whoa, every panel, every panel you're like blown away. See, we need that, we need that more now. There it is. So earlier we, you know, we got the lore drop of Chapel used to be a night strike. We have night strike. Operation night strike. Whoa right away we're in i don't know this like tactical vest but also a skin tight like it just is weird to me i'm like why would you wear all this tactical stuff like it's like it puts it in real life too much and then wear the skin tight thing that's not going to protect you at all but what oh my god were you guys surprised by that I felt like it, it feels like it's really here. That really does draw attention away from how strange and weirdly drawn these men are back here. And that, that face, whoo. Oh my God, and when I just, when I thought it was done, not even lying, those panels are amazing. You think, oh, well, it's kind of cool. No, a motorcycle in that perspective with a guy on it in that perspective, that, that thing coming right at you, that is so difficult to draw. Kudos, kudos. Their names, Bruce Stinson, we know Bruce Stinson. Oh, Al Simmons. 
Spawn's in this. This is must be back in the day when they were on Night Strike together and then he became Spawn. I know, I know I'm glossing over the story. I know people in the are gonna be like, the deep lore of Operation Night Strike. You're really missing out, but I'm just giving you guys the cliff notes. He's got a gallon of Powerade in there. He's like, taste the delicious electrolytes. You need it, your veins. Love that. Man, oh, every panel. Poof. Because every, the thing about the story is it is all designed for just big moments because the story is our team is fighting guys, we're hanging out, that's it. So there's not like a lot of subtlety. You know, like in a movie, you'd be like the scene of the paperwork and the boardroom meeting in like a show, which is not fun in a comic, honestly. This is true storytelling. Look at that tiny man in these giant babes. <laughs> no, not today, no love making for you. What a bastard. I don't know what's happening. I don't know. All I know is it's bombastic as shit. I miss the 90s, gotta turn the book around. You know what I'm saying about like all these books drawn, not drawn, you know, anatomically super well, but they make up for it and just like energy. But after a while, they all start blending in together. Uh, yeah. So, Operation Night Strike. Okay, let's end on this one, gang. Cybernary. What is that character? Now, right off the bat, I like this arm. I like the bow with the skull on it. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna tell you what, don't like the color combination of the gold bikini with the brown knee pads. I don't think that that looks good. I don't like the hair too much. The spike head thing, don't like it. I think she should have like something, I don't know, something else. I like this katana. Always throw a katana on something, instantly makes it cool. But you know, overall, oh, I like the giant tiger lion but you know i don't like all this mess back here honestly you could literally make that a white background look that it would look better let's jump in <laughs> what i did not expect to open it up on mr dapper swag prince frankenstein whoa 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 too what is that what too much guggin is that you guggin <laughs> Ch okay chomping on a a man, I guess they're feasting on him. So this is that bad guy, he's angry about something, but she's chilling out in this cave and they're after her, they think she's dead, you know, cybernary. Cybernetic girl, that's pretty cool. I like, I like that, I like that. I'll tell you what, got nothing else to say, just I like it. Cybernary's looking kind of fun. I actually like the overall, like the way it's drawn. I actually think some of the Malibu, not Malibu, Extreme Studios, like the Rob Liefeld, just, they all look so Liefeldy that they kind of don't have a style. But this has a style, like that face is really fun. It's a Joe Maddy kind of face. Yeah, Cybernary, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna get into the deep lore of Cybernary. That's cool. I, again, the hair bikini, not a big fan. I like the metal arm. The, these guys are kind of cool. Henchmen are easier for me to give a pass on because they're henchmen, they're gonna get killed. Death blow, is that him? Dude, just when you thought, Oh, you know, cyber death blow comes in and upgrades this book a whole letter grade. Death blows here. Uh, slowly, you've watched me become a death blow fan by the end of this. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put a poster up on my wall of death blow. Whoa! Cybernary. Cybernary's pretty badass. These guys are, these guys legitimately are fucking amazing. They look like Warhammer orcs, and I love that shit. So, Cybernary, good one to edit on. Bro, all right. <laughs> I hope you guys liked that video. If you guys liked the videos, go check out my other ones uh, and then check out my Etsy shop. Check out my comics that I draw if you feel like it and I'll see you next time. So 